what God does is he picks Jacob. Why? Because he's sovereign. He's making decisions. If you looked at verse 11, what did it say here? Um, Though they were not yet born and had done nothing, either good or bad, in order that God's purpose of election might continue. If you have a Bible, underline that. Or highlight on your app or whatever. God's purpose in election might continue, which means it, it had already started, because it's continuing. And God's purpose in election, this is what we got to roll over, and this is the word, election. What are we going to do with this? What does that mean? What, how do we understand this? Because clearly what it says is that God's purpose is tied to election. Now, let me just, before you, like if you've done a lot of research on this stuff, it's a decision. It's a, it's a choice. God is, God is electing. He's making a decision. He's choosing. He chose Abraham, right? He didn't choose Abraham's best friend, whoever that was. Was that, was that unfair of God? Just, we'll just start at the very beginning, right? His, his best friend's like, wait, God called you? That's not fair. Yeah, well, God's making decisions. He's, he's electing, he's choosing. And then Jacob and Esau, they pop out, and he's like, the younger. Well, that's not fair. God's like, last I checked, I'm the sovereign one. I get to make decisions. I am making decisions. But here's the thing. Could his decisions have been more loving? No. No. There is nothing God could have done throughout all of history or in the future that could have been more loving. Just hold on that one for a second. Because if it could have been, then God is not love. And Scripture tells us very clearly that God is love. 